Hey, this is Kendra for Technology Interpreters. And so the goal of my channel is to help people who are trying to get into the information security field to do so and for people who are already in the field to be able to further their skills and advance their careers within InfoSec. So today I'm gonna to walk you through a very simple hack. Um, it's uh, using Hack the Box Lame. If you're not familiar with Hack the Box, go to hackthebox.eu, sign up. I have a lot of videos showing you how to do that, how to get connected and everything like that. But today's hack, we're gonna show you just very simple going through the reconnaissance phase, we're going to the expo exploitation phase. I'm just gonna walk you through just kind of the mindset and I'm gonna explain every single detail about this hack, okay? So the first thing we do is we already got everything set up, we're connected to Hack the Box. I do have videos on my sh channel that show you how to do that if you've never done it before. But the important thing we're gonna look at is the IP address. And so the first thing that you're gonna do as a hacker is you're gonna to have to do some reconnaissance. So I'm gonna keep this simple so we're going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you can see. So the first thing you want to do is nmap is the command that you're going to use for reconnaissance. Just about every hack uh, starts off with nmap scans. And there are a lot of options, so I'm going to keep this simple. So disregard some of those commands right now. But when you start off, you're probably going to do a scan like this, nmap 10.10.10.3. What you're going to find is that the effectiveness or your hacking is going to always be dependent on how, like, how effective your reconnaissance is. So as you can see right now, we didn't get very much information. It says the host seems down and it wants you to use a minus P and command. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. We don't need all the screen real estate. Okay. So if that's the case, I'm going to do the command or type the command, but I'm going to issue a minus capital P lowercase n. This turns off the host discovery phase because obviously it's not working. So we're going to turn off host discovery. And a lot of times there'll be uh, computers that we'd be set up to do not fall victim to host discovery. So we're turning that portion off. So we did get some more information. So we know we have FTP, SSH, that BIOS, and then Microsoft directory services. I believe that's what that is. So FTP allows you to transfer files to a server, upload and download files from a server. SSH allows you to connect the terminal on the server to be able to issue commands and and to to basically control whatever server you're connecting to. Uh, NetBIOS, this is what we're going to do. NetBIOS, uh, NetBIOS name servers like I've NetBIOS in a long time, but um, we're gonna we're gonna look at this a little bit closer because we need some more information. We'll talk about this. So you notice the scan gave us information about the services, but it didn't really tell us anything about the version of it and hacking is very important to know what version of the server that you're hacking because different versions are exploitable and other versions are not so we need to continue with our commands here so i'm going to actually up the ante a little bit and i'm going to use an, a minus s b and that's to tell it to give me the version of the server that i'm scanning so now that it's doing this, we're going to wait for a second. These don't take long. The last scan may take a little longer. So hang in there. But this is part of the process. Because I want you to actually have a real perspective and I want you to keep on hacking. And this is very important to be patient. Let these scans complete. So now it comes back. So now here's what's really nice. BSFTP 2.3.4. That's awesome. That is exploitable. However, I'm not going to bore you in this video because on this server, even though VSFTP is an easy exploit, they didn't want you to exploit it on this server. So they actually set up so you cannot exploit it. So we're going to focus on what we can exploit. So we're looking here, we got right here. These two entries look very similar. So what I like to do is, this is kind of broad. It's guessing between 3X and 4X version of this. And once again, all we knew was NetBIOS SSN. Now that we know it's a Samba server, okay? Let's continue. Let's get a little bit more specific. So there's something you can issue a minus SC. Lowercase S, capital C. Okay, and disregard the end of that sentence. I'm not gonna, once again, it's showing my commands. It's showing ahead because I've already walked through this because I wanted to condense this down to something that was easier to follow. Now what's gonna happen at this point it's going, to, it's going to use what's called SC or default scripts. These are very important. I didn't use these when I started, and now SC has become very important because I understand what it does, and that's why I want to emphasize it in this video 
because I also want you to be able to see what the SC commands, because you saw with every command, we're getting additional information, okay? Just a little bit more specific. Now, one of the things I could have done with this SC command is I should have specified the port, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that, and I'm gonna say, we're looking at port 139 right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll actually issue the minus P 139 command and we'll run it again. Because we don't want it to scan and do this on all ports. That's inefficient, it wastes time. And so since we know the ports at this point with some of the, the less specific commands, we wanna get more specific each time with our commands and get the information. So now this is gonna run for a little bit. And then once it do that, does that, I'm gonna kinda of tell you where we're going with this. Once we identify the version, we're gonna start looking for the exploit. Once we identify the exploit, we're gonna make sure we give the exploit the correct options necessary to target the exploitable server. And uh, once we pro progress past there, then it's a matter of just like traversing the uh, server and identifying what we want. And so these scans, they do take a little bit, but this one won't be for just a second. And so you're gonna see, so if you will hang tight just a second, but anyway, anyway, while this is running, this is a good time to say, if you haven't already liked the video, subscribe to the channel, please continue to think, well, please continue to uh, support the channel by liking and turning on the bell for notifications. Once again, see what you get. I'm really trying to make sure I'm very thorough with these two tutorials and I want it to be very comfortable for you as you're learning back. All right, we have some information. Now look, we went from three to four, right? It just told us it was Samba version between 3X and 4X. And then we were able to get down to some really, really specific information. So we started our scan and right there it's telling us that it's Samba SMDB 3.0.2.0. That is very specific, okay? That is what we want. Not only does it do tell us that, it gives us the name of the, the server. It gives us the domain. That's all very helpful in future hacking exercise. You wanna know the domain. You need that sometimes in order to successfully complete the hack. So I'm gonna say, I like this information. So I'm gonna copy this. Control Shift C on my keyboard. I'm gonna open a new tab. So now it's a matter of finding an exploit for this one. Let's check it. So there's a good command called search exploit. All right, and you can disregard that. I'm just gonna reuse this. And let me make this a little bit bigger for you. The search exploit is absolutely awesome because it allows you to be able to find exploits without leaving the com console. The so search for it, I'm gonna do Samba 3.0.2.0. And look what we have here. We have multiple options. Now, one of the things I know, it's not showing it here. Let's make this bigger. I'm gonna run the same command because I want you to be able to see the entire thing, all right? And if you notice, as you're beginning, Metasploit is really an easy tool. We can run this manually, but anytime that we see this as part of Metasploit, that means that it's gonna make our life a lot easier when it comes to exploiting this server. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Give us a little bit more space to work with. So that's actually very good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and load Metasploit. I'm gonna leave this here for reference. I'm gonna open a new tab. And uh, some of the other guys, they're gonna, they're gonna fuss at me about because there are better terminal management programs out there. We'll talk about those in the future, okay? But I've been doing like this and, and what happens over time is sometimes you get so many tabs open that it, be, it gets a little confusing. But in this situation, we're gonna be fine. Now let's launch Metasploit. You're gonna type M S F console. Press enter, that loads Metasploit. Now there is a command, like it's gonna pop up and give you all this back, this, uh, screen with all this text and stuff like this cute little d thing that changes every time you load Metasploit. There are commands that allow you to skip all that. Don't worry about that. This is beginning hacking. We're gonna focus on the basics and the foundational elements of hacking. Now, when I started hacking or even took classes on this, Metasploit seemed like the most awesome thing in the world. I was so stoked because I was like, man, yeah, I'm hacking. But now that I've been doing this, it's not so much, it's kind of like, really looked on look up, looked upon as kind of like the newbie tool right but a lot of uh, professionals still use metasploit so don't feel so bad okay but 
you, you do want to progress to the point of scripting these things out. But right now, let's just get you involved, get myself involved, and progress down the path. Now that I'm in Metasploit, let's make this bigger. I'm going to clear my screen. Now, remember what I'm searching for. Same thing. I'm searching for Samba 3.0.2.0. I know according to exploit DB that it's there. Let me show you exploit DB also. Same thing right here. I just went to exploit DB, put in the search 3.2.0. That's the same thing that I saw in the search exploit command. So I'm showing you multiple places to be able to find things. And exploit DB is right there on your Kali Linux VM, along with, along with the Google Hacker database. So this is what we are searching for. And so we know that's between 3.2.0 and 3.2, oh, I'm sorry, 3.0.20 and 3.0.25 RCM. That's where our exploit works. So now we're in Meta, Metasploit. We know there's an option right there. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. So I can copy this command by pressing Control Shift C and I can say use space right here. That works. As you'll see right here, Let me go. I'm going to type the back command to take that off. Or I can say, I can do my search again. And notice this has a zero or a number in front of it. So sometimes you may have a list of exploits. Once you do the search, they'll be numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You just say use zero on list. It's the same thing. I'm going to clear my screen. Now that we're here, it's time to complete the exploit. So now what we want to do is we want to just type show options. Now this is the screen that allows you to input the data necessary. One of the things you want to focus on right now is our host, the target of our exploit, L host, our local computer, the port. We don't have to change it for this, but sometimes you have to change your port. And sometimes you may have to change your remote port because sometimes maybe the web server is on a different port. For this exercise, we're going to go ahead and set our host. So set our host without the S. Okay. And that's going to be 10.10.10.3. How do I know that? It's right there on the hack 10.10.10.3. We'll leave that up. I'm going to type show options again. And look, that has been set 10.10.10.3. Now we're going to set the L host. This was a little bit interesting. So what is your local? Your L host is your local IP address, but sometimes you have multiple IP address. So IF config, press enter. When you press enter, you're listed like you have a lot of different addresses here. This is your Ethernet address. But if you're connected to hack the box like I am, you're connected over VPN. Those actually show up with a TUN for tunnel, tunnel zero. At least that's my assumption what TUN means. So for us, we have to, the ability to set this to, uh, a couple of ways. I'm going to copy my IP address right here, 10.10.16.5. Type clear. Again, I like clearing my screen. Show options. And I'm going to set L host, control shift V. And you notice anytime it has the L host and the little equals and greater than, that tells you it was su successful. So type show options. And there it is, it's set. Well, but you can also use the interface name. Remember I told you VPNs use tunnel zero. You can just say that L host TUN zero. Show options again. Do look and see what we did. Now it's set to TUN zero. That works too. You can set it based on, based on the, inter the interface or actually IP address. Now that we have this set, this should be everything we need to export the box. The final command in Metasploit is to type exploit. And if we got all of our options correctly, this will work. Okay, looks like it opened the command shell. Now for this exploit, nothing happens. You don't see it. That's because we don't have a good shell. A shell is where you issue all your commands. So let's type ls and guess what? We're on the server, but look how, eh, that's not so good. So what we want to do is let's type shell minus i. The minus i specifies that we want an interactive shell. Found, all right, it found Ben Bash. And let's type the ls command again. Whoa, look at that. Looks better. So now we need to find who we are. 
the one of the first things you're going to do when you explore the server is you want to do a PWD. Now, from a defender perspective, these are also the type of things that you're looking for in your security logs. Commands that somebody who's explored in a box that they may issue. The print working directory is what PWD stands for. And it shows that we're at slash, which means we're at the root. If this was Windows, it'd be like C colon. We're at the bottom of all the folder structure or the top, or I don't know. We're at the root. Root seems like bottom to me. Okay, and so we can, you can then move our way around into other directories, but we need to know who we are. So we type who am I? Oh snap, I'm root. If this is Windows, you would see like NT authority, uh, NT authority in a system or something like that. Don't quote me on that. Close though. All right, but we're root. That means that we're the administrator on the server at this point. That's great. That means we have full control. So the first thing you want to do with these exercises is you need to figure out where the user flag. Servers have two flags in these type of exercises. A user flag, which is means you're not the administrator, not the root, and then a root flag. But if you get root from the beginning, you can get both flags. Pretty simple. So for us, the first thing we want to do is navigate from root to the home folder. And as you can see, it's right there in the list. We did an ls command. So we'll type home, type ls again. There it is. Now, I've done the exercise once again, but just through reasoning, what we're typically looking for is a user. So these are, this is not the user, not the service, not this, but although we may look at those, there may be logs or something in there that's helpful. But for us, we're looking for the user facts flag uh, specifically. So we're going to type CD make us. Type LS again, and there's the user flag to display the contents of a text file or pretty much any file in Linux. Just type cat user.txt. Oh, well, maybe you should spell it correctly. Once again, I don't have an interactive shell, so I can't just press the up arrow again. So I'm going to type. By the way, there's ways to do that. We'll cover that in future exercises. User.txt. I didn't get my T on there. There's the actual user flag. I've already completed this box, but for you, what you'll do is you'll go to the option, go back to hack the box and click submit flag at this point. You'll paste the flag here and I'll show you what the heck. Might as well show you. So you double click that, control shift C, go to hack the box, control V, because we're not in the terminal. Choose how difficult you feel like this server exploit was, which is right there, and hit submit. I've already completed the box as it shows over here, so I don't get credit for it again. And this is a retired box, so that's why I can stream it. I can only stream servers that are or upload videos about servers that have been decommissioned or no longer exploitable for points. So you don't get a rank based on this. It's retired, it's done. So the last part of this is we've got the user flag, we need to find a root flag. So we'll type CD forward slash like that. That takes us back down to the root directory below all folders, not into any folders, but at the point where I'm not in any folders, I'm just the base of the file system. Type LS again, and I'm looking for where's root. Oh, oh there it is right there. There's a folder. See, it's listed in blue, CD root. They might not always be listed in blue. You may have different shells that have different levels. Type ls and there's root.txt. So I'm going to cat root.txt. There it is. Copy this. Go to uh, hack the box and click submit flag. Put that in. And you would officially just pwned this lame box. If this video was helpful and encouraging, please don't forget to drop a like on the video. If you made it to the end of this video, please type hashtag lame. And don't forget, I actually live on live stream on Twitch twitch.tv slash technology underscore interpreters. Look up interpreters if you don't know how to spell it correctly. A lot of people get that wrong. But anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.